everyone to another week of tips and tricks with 51. This week we're going to be taking a look at video data sets and how you can represent your labels in your data set in different ways with 51. To get started we're going to use Kaggle to download a Kaggle data set of sign language actors. These sign language actors are signing different words, I think 200 different words, and when you can get the data set either from Kaggle directly or you can download it using the API. Once you've unzipped that data set, we're going to import a couple libraries that are going to get us started with our data set. These libraries help us get our paths and load into pandas and such. First, we're going to start by loading in a data frame, a pandas data frame, of our labels. This will be able to show us our different words in our column gloss. This column gloss is being stored at 200 different words, such as book, drink, computer, before, and chair, and the instances associated with them. Each word can have anywhere between 2 to 16 different videos associated with them. Each of these videos are stored as an instance. The instance stores metadata such as the video ID, FPS, encoding method, as well as a bounding box that encompasses the actor. To load in our data set, we're going to set a path to our video data set. Using 51 data set from directory, we can load in our data set by specifying it as video directory. We are then going to ensure frames and compute metadata. Both of these will help us later on whenever we're adding labels to our data set. But in short, ensure frames, make sure that each frame within our videos is able to store information and compute metadata stores things such as the width, height, and duration of each of our videos. I'm going to name our data set and make it persistent so that way the changes we make are saved to disk. Once that is done, we can launch and view our data set. So we'd be able to notice multiple different actors here. These actors are signing out their different words. But we don't have any labels yet, so we don't know which words they are. So the first way that we can put labels onto our data set is the way the data set intended, and that's sample level detections. A sample level detection is defined the same way that an image detection would be defined. In our data set, the labels JSON has more videos that, than is contained within our actual 51 data set. In order to make sure that we are only loading in labels of our data set videos that are present, we're going to look up based off our video ID into our data frame to find the instance that contains information such as the bounding box and label. We are also going to create a view of our data set. This is going to make sure all of our functions run faster. And as we add our sample level detections, we can look through them. So after we find our video row, we're able to grab our label as gloss and our bounding box here. Now this bounding box is in a YOLO v3 format and 51 supports normalized bounding boxes as XY with height. So we can do a simple transformation here. After that is complete, we can add a detection using the bounding box and label. You can use the FO detection label object past the bounding box pass the gloss in, and then we wrap it up as a 51 detections object and put into our sample field under sample label. We make sure that we save each sample afterwards, that way the changes are taken into our data set. Afterwards we can view our changes, and now we can see our new bounding box on top of our actors. Notice that the sample level detection is static throughout the entire frame or an entire video and does not change. The opposite of that would be the frame level detection. A frame level detection is able to move throughout the video and can track or move with objects as well as as long as they're being stored within each frame. You can also add things such as tracks or index. So if a tracking data set tracking people across your video, you can also add that information as well. Now since our bounding boxes in this data set inherently are not moving, I'm going to create a function called bigger bounding box which will just grow our bounding box as the video goes on. So, in order to load it, we can get started. Oop, this didn't get ran. Try again. So, as we're loading it in, we can see all the same code from a sample level detection. This time, however, we're going to create a for loop where we can iterate through each frame in our sample under sample.frames. We're going to make a bigger bounding box and add it the same way. Just this time, instead of saving it to the sample, we will save it to the frame under the field frame label. After these frame labels are loaded, we can view our data. So, 
we'll go back to our actor here. We can start our video, and we can see now we are moving bounding box for our frame level detections. We can also see that our sample level detections are s stored under labels here. We see our first one we added, sample label, but frame levels are stored under here, under frame labels. Just a good thing to keep an eye on if you're ever keeping track. Another way to represent your data in a video data set is temporal detections. This is kind of like a classification of a timed event. In order to define it, you need to specify a start and end point within your video and the label associated to that time. Now there are multiple ways to do this. In our data set, if you were to expand on it, you could add sentences of sign language and add temporal detections for the sign being thrown at that sign. If the sign being signed at the time it changes, you would change your temporal detection with it. In our case, we only have one sign going on, so halfway through we will change it to ASL is awesome. You can define these temporal detections like this with a timestamp where we use the sample metadata from before to specify the start and end timestamp. You can also use frames as well. So we can run this code and load in our data. Give it a second to add our temporal data sets in. Another good use of a temporal detection is something like a semantic component to a visual data set, so it's an automatic automotive driving data set, where you could say something like a pedestrian crossing a street. So if we start our video here, we're now able to see our temporal detection in the top left. It starts with six and then flips to ASL's awesome halfway through. We're really getting these labels on. Lastly, a classic, no pun intended, maybe a little, is video classification. It's important to know that now we have three different labels that are representing our data here, but it's also important not to underestimate what might be the most classic and basic version, but not to underestimate its power in video curation. We can add on our labels here using the classification label just as an image by passing in the label associated with each video. And now, once we load our data set in again, we have a much clearer and visual picture of exactly what sign is in each video. So we can see here, six and nephew, and we have a much more visual component on which is happening in our data set. As always, you can go into any of these labels and sort by a certain class so you can find different words such as vague and find all the videos associated with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's tips and tricks. As always, if you guys have any questions, hop over to our community Slack where we're more than happy to assist you on your computer vision adventure. If you're looking for more content like this, tips and tricks, or other blog posts about computer vision, hop over to our blog at 51.com or check out some other YouTube videos that we have. Until next week, I hope you guys have a great one. See ya.